Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to talk about the really big errors that mainstream mathematics academics make. One of them <clears throat> is in assuming that they can actually deal with infinity. Now, sometime in high school, you're usually taught that you can take a geometric series, say for example like this, uh, where you have uh, A, which is the first term, plus AR, where R is the common ratio, like that, plus AR to the N minus 1. Okay, so you could have a series like that, and you could very easily find a formula if you do a little trick by multiplying each side, not by A, oops, not by A, but rather by R, I'm sorry, by R, okay. So you multiply by R, and the first term multiplied by R is AR, and this term multiplied by R, okay, will be, well, that's still going to be AR minus 1, but the next one is going to be AR to the N, right? So <clears throat> if we do a subtraction, if this is 1 and this is 2, and we say 1 minus 2, <coughs> we'll get something like 1 minus R, Sn and A minus AR to the N, from which we can say Sn is equal to A 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Okay, now, um, academics love to think that if R lies between minus 1 and 1, okay, then they can just discard this second term here. So we could break this up like this and like this. Okay, so they think we could break it up like that and we could just consider what happens to this 1 to the 10th to the n as n approaches infinity, as if there were even a limit inside this inside this. Uh, equation here. There's no limit there, but they just don't care. They go ahead and they decide we're going to put a limit there as n approaches infinity and a limit here as n approaches infinity. And of course, this here magically becomes s infinity. And this magically becomes a of 1 minus r. Okay. Absolute garbage, because this here is not the sum to infinity, but the limit. And so you'll say, well, <clears throat> It's true because it works out. No, it doesn't. And I'm about to show you right now why it doesn't work out. So let's take a typical example. So just to just to make some space here, I'm going to clear out part of this. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to push this. Actually, I could clear that out too. Don't need that. And I'm going to hoist this all the way to the top here like that. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you, <clears throat> what if I have a series like this, 3 tenths, Up. <clears throat> 3 tenths plus 3 hundredths plus 3 thousandths, okay, plus dot, dot, dot. Now, they'll be very quick to say, mm, the first term is 3 tenths, so it goes on the top. And it's 1 minus 1 tenth. And then they'll say, okay, well, that's 3 tenths. And this is going to be 9 tenths. So that's 3 over 9, which is 1 third. And they think that they've, in their stupidity, that they've done a sum to infinity. Okay. Absolute garbage. And now let me show you why doing monkey business like this leads to wrong results. It's very simple. It's very simple. This series here, if it could be summed, right, would contradict the fact that a third has no expression in base 10. And you say, how? Well, I'm going to point you to a proof here that I've created, especially for ma morons like mathematics professors and teachers. And this is the entire proof. And it's a very important number theorem that mainstream mathematics never learned. Okay. What it says is, 
Given any rational number expressed as p over q and base b, we can express the measure of p over q in base b if and only if b contains all the prime factors of q. That tells us immediately, and, and you can look through the proof. It's a free article, so I'll put a link to it. You can look through the proof in your own time. <clears throat> but what it's saying, uh, which is totally opposite to what this says, is that a third <laughs> is not equal to this series. Okay, maybe equal to the limit, but it's not equal to an infinite sum. And <clears throat> there is no such thing as an infinite sum. You cannot sum a series to infinity. So where did all this start from? Well, I'm about to show you. Let's leave that pencil on and go back here. Now, this monkey business started with somebody called Leonhard Euler. In his elements of algebra, I like to call them his elements of algebraish. To be honest, it would have been a pretty good book if he had not included all this garbage in it. So he says, Daher ist unser Bruch, 1 over 1 plus A, gleich dieser unendlichen Reiche. And what that means, literally translated, is, therefore, is our fraction, 1 over 1 plus A, equal this unending or infinite series, okay? And that infinite series there, by the way, is can be denoted by S, as you see here. Let's get a copy of this, and let's see what's happening here. <coughs> so we'll copy this, and clear this out, and paste it here, like that. So what is, what is Euler saying? He's saying, that s is equal to lim s well first of all that's false because um, s is this sequence which doesn't have an end and can't be summed and so <clears throat> this is a sequence and this is a, a limit a sequence and a limit are two different things okay so this is where you got the gibberish of one third equals to 0 0.333 dot 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 and and also this garbage um, one is equal to 0 0.999 dot 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 both of these are wrong okay wrong total garbage syphilitic brains the thought of syphilitic brains like those of Euler's and your mainstream math professor and your teacher so this theorem that I've just showed you proves that you cannot represent a third in base 10. So it would make no sense to say S is equal to lim S in this case, because it's not true. Okay. So a third does not have a measure in base 10 because three is not a prime factor. It's not one of the two prime factors of base 10, which are two and five, right? Okay. So, and it also, it's not mathematics to write sum to infinity is equal to A over one minus R. That's just bullshit. Infinity is not a number. Okay. And if you go back to what I showed you earlier, you'll see that when you split up the two terms, let's just do that again, split up the two terms. So what you'll have is, is SN is equal to A over 1 minus R minus ARN over 1 minus R. So if you split up the two terms, you can just inadvertently put a limit as n goes to infinity here, and then just say that's s to infinity. Absolute BS, okay? Now, uh, Professor David Aldrich had a problem when I showed him my proof using your bullshit machinery of limits that the mean value theorem is, in fact, the fundamental theorem of calculus. He had a problem with this. So <laughs> on one hand, you're allowed to do this, and on the other hand, you're not allowed to do this. And I'm telling you, you're not allowed to do it, period. Well, that's pretty much it. If you're not already a follower on my channel, my new, cal my, uh, new calculus channel, you can simply go to it and subscribe, click like on the videos, join my members only uh, video, which means that you'll have access to a lot of content that I don't share with the public. And that's just going to cost you $4.99 a month. And of course, you'll 
definitely get all the benefits of that. As you can well imagine, I don't share everything with the public. So that's pretty much it. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.